Welcome to chapter 9 of my iOS 7 book for absolute beginners. In this chapter you'll look at perhaps the most common control used in iOS applications, the table view. As well as being used for general data representation, table views are commonly used for navigation. So for example, if we take a look at the settings app in your iPhone, this is an example of a table view that you might be familiar with. So here we can see we have different sections in the table view, one section containing general and privacy, one section containing all of these settings and one uh, which are Apple specific settings and one section for third party application settings. Each of the cells in the table view also have a little disclaimer arrow beside or disclosement arrow beside them. So when I select it, it's telling me that I'm going to navigate. And here again in privacy, I have yet another table view with multiple sections in it. And when I select them, I can navigate over and back to different content. Here we have another table view and this time the set table view cells even have a control within them. So it shows how powerful a table view can be. It can be used for rendering data and it can be commonly used for navigation. So let's take a look at building our own simple table view. So with Xcode, I'm going to create a new Xcode project. I'm going to make it a single view application. Let me just resize this. I'm going to make it a single view application and I'm going to call it table view test. Organization name and company identifier can be whatever you like, but make sure class prefix is empty and the device is set to iPhone. When I select finish, uh, when I select, I can then go to my desktop. I'm just going to put the code there and make sure source control is unchecked and click create. So I'm now taken to my familiar view where I have my app delegate, my main storyboard and my view controller. So I want to edit my main storyboard and I'll open up the code assistant here. Now one thing to be careful of is you'll see that you have a table view controller, but there's also a table view. And what we want is actually the table view and not the table view controller. So I'm going to select the table view and I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drop it onto my view and size it using the guides like so. So now we have my table view on there with some prototype content in it, but we're going to be overriding that prototype content. So first thing is I want to create an outlet for my table view so I can refer to it in my code. So I'm just going to control drag. I'm going to set, use the assistant to point to viewcontroller.h and I'm going to control drag and I'm going to create an outlet and I'll call it teams table. So as we did with the picker in the last chapter, um, we're going to be using delegates to make the view to be the table view delegate so it receives events from the table view as well as the table views data source delegate so that the view itself defines the data for the table view. So I'm just going to turn off the assistant and go back to my view controller.h and in my view controller.h I'm going to tell it that it's a UI table view delegate and that it's a UI table view data source. <clears throat> like so. And if I go back to my viewcontroller.m now, um, I'm ready to start coding it. And I'll see that little warning pops up. And this warning is telling me that there's some methods that need to be implemented because this is a delegate and you haven't implemented them yet. So I'll go and do that in just a moment. But beforehand, I just want to make sure that I'm saying it's the data source and the delegate for this specific table, which I called Teams table. So I'm going to set it to be the Teams table data source and the Teams table delegate. Now because it's the uh, data source, I need to create some data for it and I'm going to put that data in an NS array. So I'm going to declare an NS array that I call Teams array, like so. And now within my view did load, I'll just paste a new one in, like so. So now I've set up my Teams array to be this data. There's about 20 items of data in here. So the next thing that I need to do, based on these warnings, is that I have to obviously specify the number of rows in the section and the number of sections if I want to use that. So first of all, I'm just going to say the number of rows in my section. So that's how many rows are there in this table, and the number of rows, of course, is the number of teams based on the data that I've entered here. So I want to say minus ns integer, like so. And if I press T, it'll hint to me that it's table view and there's a number of different things that I could be doing in table view. But the one I'm interested in right now is the number of rows in section because I need to implement that. And all I have to do is return the uh, teams array count. 
So I've now told Xcode that I've told iOS that when it was rendering the table view that the number of rows and sections should be the size of this array. So whatever that is, 20 or 22 or whatever the number that's in that array. So now the next thing is that then for each cell within the table view, it's going to make a call to say what should the contents for the cell at this row be. And so the function for that is called cell for row at index path. And it returns something called a UI table view cell. So if I start typing UI table view cell, and I press T, whoops, UI table view cell star, because it's a pointer to one, and I press T, then I get the hint uh, table view, and I'm probably trying to write a cell for row at index path, which I am. So I do this, and now I say, okay, what content do I want to put in here? Here's where it gets a little bit complex. Um, so when iOS is looking at a cell, it needs an identifier for that cell because there may be multiple tables or multiple table views on the same view. So the first, so what I want to do is create a string, and it can be anything as an identifier for a cell. So I'm going to say static NS string, um, simple table identifier this can be anything equals I'm gonna say team cell because I have teams in this cell and once I have my table identifier I'm gonna use that for fishing out the, the cells as um, when I'm when I try to select them and when I'm looking at it later on but as we notice that this function returns a UI table view cell so the next thing I want to do is create the value that I'm gonna return so I'm gonna call it just gonna call it this cell so UI table view cell, this cell has to be something. So here's where it gets a little complex. So table view. And then what I need to do is to dequeue a reusable cell using that identifier. So it's almost like I'm creating and dequeuing this object out of thin air using an identifier and associating it with this table. And the command for that is, as you might expect, dequeue. So let me just go back. So it was cut off at the bottom of the video. So this cell is table view DQ reusable cell with identifier. And the identifier is going to be what I <coughs> just set up, which was simple table identifier. So I'm going to create this cell out of thin air using that identifier by dequeuing it out of the table view. Now, if the cell was already there, I'm going to have the cell. So if it was something that was already on the table, I'll have a reference to that because I'm using the identifier to do it. Otherwise, my cell is going to be null. So it's going to create this great big empty cell out of nowhere. And if it's null, now I want to create it. Um, I want to create the type of cell that it's going to be. And there's lots of different types of cells, as we saw in the example. Some had controls in them. Some had you know graphics in them, that type of thing. And that's based on a style for the cell. So I'm going to say, OK, I've dequeued this thing out of thin air. There was nothing there for me to base it on. So I'm going to say I'm going to create a new table view cell out of this. And I'm going to initialize it with a style. So I'm going to initialize it with a style, as we can see here. And there's a bunch of different styles, but I'm just going to use the UI table view cell style default. And you can see like there are subtitle, value one, value two, etc. But I'm just going to use the default cell. And then my reuse identifier for this again is my simple table identifier that I created earlier on. So now if the cell that I pulled out was nil, I've created a new one. I've set the style for it, but of course I haven't set the text for it. So I have to set the text based on, it has a thing called a text label. And I can just then set that to my to be my team's array, object at index, um, index path dot row, because I'm not being passed a row here, I'm being passed an index path onto the table because there may be multiple sections in the table, etc. So I have to look at the row for this particular index path. So index path dot row. Oops, too many square brackets. No, nope, I'm good. Yeah, I shouldn't have square brackets around index path dot row. Let me just correct that, like so. Oh, 
one other mistake is that I have to set the text of the text label, not the text label itself. So this is a string and my text label is an object, but I have to set the text of that, which is why I had an error there. So now it's all good. And then I just return this cell because this function is expecting me to return a cell. That's pretty complex stuff. You've dived in pretty deep there. I know this isn't exactly absolute beginner stuff and how the um, DQ reusable cell with identifier and all that stuff works. Um, the one thing that I'd say is just over time as you do it many, many times, you, it'll become natural to you to, to do it in this way. So let's run the application and take a look. And there we go. So now I have my table view on my app. And I mean, I can't really do much with it right now, but it's set up with the data. And you can see it looks like a little bit like we had with the um, with the settings app. Obviously, the cells are very basic. I'm not using graphics or um, disclosure identifiers or anything like that in the cell, but it gives you the idea for how they should work.